Shalom, Yasharana. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who rule well. I taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Archim out there. Spreading his word in truth and sincerity and shalom to the few Arkwath that are listening in today. I'm back at you with another lesson in Tightwood. Sorry, excuse me. So <coughs> lucky. <coughs> 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 I'm back at you with another lesson in Tightwood. This devil has to go, man. And before I get into it, you know. Um, I still don't really feel too good. You know, I've got like a headache and uh, coughing, sneezing, blocked nose, runny nose, all sorts of things, man. But, you know, that doesn't matter to Esau Edom. You know, you, you still got to, regardless of how you feel, you still, you still got to pull up to the plantation field, man. You know? And uh, that would be one of many reasons why this devil has to go, man, you know. But over here, you're looking at uh, a picture of Esau in his, uh, in his true state, his natural element, all right. They call this, uh, um, they call this so-called creature a wood wolf, W-O-O-D. W O S E, but really and truly, this is just uh, Esau in his uh, in his true state, man. Remember, they are um, they're cave dwellers <laughs> originally. You know, oh thou that dwelleth in the, in the clefts of the rocks. All right, but these are the people that are ruling over us, man. And then you wonder why Esau Edom he likes to. Uh, you know, these devils don't like to have beards. They always like to have the uh, the clean shave, you know. And ultimately, that's because they're running from their identity. They're running from who they are, man. This this is Esau, Edom, you know. Uh, when we have them in captivity in the kingdom, we're going to be seeing them in their true natural state, which is just wild, uh, wild men. All right, men, men of the uh, of 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 the field, you know. Uh, basest of men. Okay, this is a. Uh, this is Esau Edom, man. And this is who is ruling over us, ruling over the entire world in wickedness. So, this devil has to be um has to be uh shifted out of the way. You know. Um. I'm going to start off here in Genesis 27, verse 11, and it reads, And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Because when you look at Jake, for the most part, Jake has you know, got the smooth skin. It really got too much hair. All right, and, and and this goes all the way back to Jacob and Esau, man. It says Esau, my brother, is a hairy man. All right, so we know that this is uh, Esau in his true state, and then these lots go through uh, the effort of, of getting a clean shave, shaving their skin, and so on and so forth to run from their identity, man. All right, but you can't deny the facts. Okay, but this devil has been ruling in wickedness for far too long, man. And as I said, according to scripture, they are the basest of men. Yeah, they have power over the whole entire earth right now. Okay, Job 9 and 24 says how um, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, all right? You know, and uh, as a result, there's a lot of suffering, there's a lot of death, there's a lot of bloodshed, there's a lot of evil that goes on. Uh, um, across the four corners of the earth, man. That's because the rule of the earth, the current rule of the earth, is is, is wicked himself, man. Okay. 
And this is uh, one of many reasons as to why this devil has got to go. Okay, let's go to the book of Proverbs 29 and verse 2. And it reads, when the righteous are in authority, you are the righteous, the Israelites. Okay, you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans who make up the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the righteous, man. Although a lot of our people follow after Esau, Edom's wicked vibration. So a lot of our people uh, are, are wicked right now. They're in a wicked state of mind. Okay. But reading on, it says, uh, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. And uh, that's exactly what we see going on, man. We we got the, the whole world mourning. You know, we see the whole world mourning, Salaki. You know, uh, everyone is suffering under Esau, Edom's rulership. You know, wickedness and folly is setting great dignity under um, Esau, Edom's rulership. Okay? So this is how we know who's in power right now. <laughs> Because trust me, man, half of this abominable sh- well, all this abominable shit ain't going to be happening when Jake get into power, man, underneath your house, shy. None of this wickedness is going to be going on, man. All right, but he's, uh, this devil has destroyed the earth, he's destroyed the planet. You know, uh, certain animals he's brought to the point of extinction. And really, the funny thing is, uh, Esau Edom, he's going to get brought to the point of extinction after he serves a thousand years of slavery under the Israelites in the kingdom. <coughs> so lucky. Then Esau Edom is going to be extinct, you know, so... um. What, is, what does it say in uh, the book of Job, chapter 4 and 7? No, not... Uh... Hold on. I think it might be Job 20. Yeah. Thawadi, how about Shemi Al-Shai? Job 20 will start at 4. Rem- uh, knowest thou... Not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for the moment. So yeah, you got the the wicked in power right now, and you know, they're, they're in the power seat, and you know, they're wearing the trousers currently, but that's just but for a moment, man. Because once Yahweh Shah returns, they're going straight into captivity under the Israelites. Okay, so he just got to enjoy his, his short moment of uh, of madness, yeah? Verse 6, Though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall, shall say, where is he? Because, you know, after his a thousand, a thousand years of slavery in the kingdom under, under the Israelites, he, he's going to be done away with, man. Obadiah one eighteen. He's going to be done away with, man. You know, so uh, we just have to, uh, as Baruch says, suffer patiently. You know, but 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 the recompense most definitely is going to be sweet, man. You you, you just, uh, you wait on it, Israel. All right, let's go to uh, the book of Isaiah. 33 and verse 1. Woe to thee. Which woe means destruction to thee, that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. So when he saw Edom gets knocked out of that power seat, all that treacherous dealing he had upon the people, especially the children of Israel, that's going to be returned upon his own head in the kingdom, man. 
and it's going to be double. The scripture says, uh, recompense unto them double, right? So trust me, man, the last thing you'd want to be in this day and age is an Edomite, you know? Yeah, they're proud right now and then they're blessing, but yo, we have um, an eternal glory ahead of us, man. Not no temporary glory like Esau, Edom. We're going to be ruling uh, perpetually, man. <laughs> when your house I returns, you see. And boy, are we going to fuck up these devils in the kingdom, man. Trust me. Verse 2, O oh Lord, Lord, uh, capital L-R-O-D, that's Yahweh, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. Because we, we need salvation, man. We need the Lord on our side in, 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 in the times that are fastly approaching. You know, that time of trouble is, is around the corner. You know, you've got uh, the wars and rumours of wars. You've got the uproars of the people. Uh, everything is being moved in position for, for, for the nations to come together and, and, you know, go up to this great battle, man. Armageddon. When the Hebrew tongue, Hamagad won. Okay? So, we're praying that the Lord... Uh, what does it say in uh, is it Habakkuk 3 and 2? In wrath... <laughs> Remember mercy. You know, we're hoping the Lord remembers his mercy. I mean, this time a judgment comes on these devils, man. All right. Let's go to Sirach. Ecclesiasticus 10 and verse 1. A wise judge will instruct his people and the government of the prudent man is well ordered. Well, we know that, that that's definitely not talking about Esau. Because uh, Esau is basically like a big kid in power, man. And you can tell by the state of the people, you know, um, the morals of the people. Okay. Verse 2. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the rule of the city is, such are all that dwell therein. So yeah, because we have Esau, Eden ruling over us right now, you've got this world just operating in a, in a wicked vibration. And, and, and they think that's cool, man. They, they, they love that they're operating in, in a wicked vibration. They don't want to get right. You know, the Israelites in the world, they don't want to get right with the Lord. You know, they, they want to be in that um, do do as thy wilt spirit, man. You know. Uh, verse 3. An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. You see, so um, having Esau, Edom in power, he's destroying the people. He's destroying life itself. You know, people be dying at an alarming rate. People be dying young, man. People's minds are in a, are in a state of complete wickedness. That's because Esau Edom is in power right now, man. And this devil has got to go. You know, he has got to go, man. Because he's proven to be more destructive than, 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 than productive. Everything Esau Edom puts his hands on, he destroys. You know, he's the harbinger of death, as Elder Apostle Gabar likes to go into. You see. Verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. That one that is profitable is Yahweh Shai. And that's who we're waiting for, man, because we are. Uh, Pursuing to market two and ten, we know and understand that this is not our rest. This kingdom is not our rest, man. Which is why we don't get any rest in this kingdom. We're operating under the wicked vibration of Esau, Eden. 
he uh, dealing treacherously with, with the children of Israel, especially those of us who are in this truth. You know, so we're just waiting for Yahweh Shah's return, man. You know, we're waiting for one that is profitable to be set up over the people, which is Yahweh Shai. Okay. Let's go to Isaiah 10. Verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. And and that's Esau, man. You know, he's uh, got all these unrighteous laws going out, man. Remember once upon a time, you couldn't enter a supermarket, you couldn't enter a restaurant, you couldn't enter a building without having that stupid fucking mask on your face, man. Can you believe it? You know, like, just, just all... All sorts of madness. Now it's going to be... Uh, if you ain't got the MOTB... You can't buy or sell. Pursuing to uh, Revelation 13 and 16, man. You know, that's... Uh, that's this devil for you, man. Verse 2. To turn aside the needy from judgment. And that's the Israelites, okay? And to take away the right from the poor of my people... That widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. And that's what they're doing to our people, man. I believe it's the book of James 5 and 8 where it says, uh, 1 and 8, where it says that we are uh, kept back by fraud. You know, they've got this new monetary system, the paper notes. And uh, that's pretty much what's holding us back. You know, because we are being kept back by fraud when the real money is gold, silver and, you know, things like cattle, things you can actually uh, barter. All right. Verse three. And what will you do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will you flee f for help? And where will you leave your glory? Because boy, see when, when the Lord pulls up on Esau, Edom, he ain't gonna have, he ain't gonna be able to do nothing in his day of visitation, man. He's just gonna have to hold that judgment. Okay, and the thing is, you know, pursuing to Psalm 49 and 11, Esau, Edom, he his inward thought is that his houses shall continue forever. So he basically thinks that that um um, um his kingdom is gonna continue forever, man. He don't believe that he's going to be knocked out of the power seat. Yanked out of the power seat, man. But boy, he's in for a, for a rude awakening, man. That's for sure. Okay. Let's bring out this last precept and I'm going to close out, man. To lock you for, uh, you know, just that uh, whole sniffing, sneezing, coughing and everything, man. But hey, man. Uh, he's so you know he's polluted the air man you know it's been raining a lot here in london and you already know about the chemtrails and you know so sort of affecting the health and the livelihood of the people man all right but let's close out here in jeremiah 49 and 12 for thus saith the lord behold they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, and that's talking about you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you Israelites, right? Yo, you was never meant to drink of the cup, meaning you was never meant to face the wrath of the Lord, but because of our sins and our transgressions, we did. All right, but but look at what look at all the pain and suffering we've gone through as the children of the Most High. So what do you think Esau, Edom, who's the wicked, is going to have to endure, man? Think about it. Let's read it again. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. So Esau, Edom, as I said, pursuing to Psalms 49, he believes his, his kingdom is going to go on forever, man, but he's going to drink of the cup as well. All right? He's most definitely going to drink of the cup. And the scripture says... uh. 
recompense onto them double, man. So the last person you'd want to be in these last days is Esau Edom, man, because he's, he's dealt treacherously with the, and he's going to have to receive double for his treacherous dealings, man. So you, you, you don't want to be an Edomite in these last days. All right. But, you know, fact of the matter is, this devil has got to go, man. Look at him. Basest of men, as it says in Daniel 4 and 17. This, this ain't a, a man to be glorified. You know? But he's ruling over us, man. Fucking cave dwellers, man. You know? <laughs> but that's all I have for uh, uh, this lesson, man. You know, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. So lucky once again. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit under the weather, but you know. <laughs> Lord willing, the point was made, man. Until the next time, I say shalom.